Hi, Matt from Modern Samurai again, and today we're going to look at some simple self-defense and we're going to especially look at how to survive a knife attack. How to survive a knife attack. Ah! Create distance. Run if you can. That's number one. So when it comes to a knife attack then, a lot of people say what you need to do is run. Yeah. Alright, so the first point then is running away. Now obviously, if that is a possibility, you should definitely take that option. It makes no sense whatsoever to engage with somebody with a knife unless you absolutely have no choice. So number one, run. Okay, if you can do so. But then you've also got to bear in mind that that may not be the option because there are there are other factors into play here. Okay, so imagine that you're sort of you know you're a woman and you're or a, or a man whatever whatever you're a parent and you're pushing your baby child along in a push chair and you're walking through the park and suddenly somebody jumps out with a knife. You know what do you do at that point? Do you just sort of you know wave at the child and go see ya and leg it. Okay, perhaps running isn't an option there. What about if again if you've got an elderly relative and you can't just leave them and leg it? What about if you're actually injured and you've got your leg in a cast, you're on crutches? What about if you know you don't know the area? What about what about if you're in a place where you don't know if you're actually running from danger or into more danger? And then what happens if you know you expend all your energy by trying to escape but then have to fight at the end, but you've got nothing left to fight with? So running definitely is the first option, but Sometimes that isn't the available choice, okay? So what do you do next? Number two, create space. Use your environment. So, number two, okay? Create space, use the environment. If you can't escape and, you, and you've got to stay in, the, in that environment, if you've got to stay in that space, then try and create some barriers, try and create some blocks, okay? So, what I mean by that, look, is I'm gonna use this to demonstrate. So, if he's here with the knife, I'm gonna try and hide behind something. Well, be running around a car or a bush or a tree or whatever I'm gonna try and put something between me and that person okay number three utilize an equalizer right so if all other options have failed then use what you've got to hand yeah try and find something that's gonna even the score just a little bit all right now a few examples could be if you have a bag so if you've got a bag I can use the bag see I can use the bag swinging like this to create space I can use the strap Okay, there are things I can do with that, it's just something I can use to try and help. Okay, if we've got something, a heavier object, now if you think about, say, a bike helmet or picking up a rock or a brick, now that can be used as a clubbing device, a blocking device, there are all kinds of things we can do with that. All right, now, one of the things we can use is a chair. Now, if I've got a chair, who's got the better weapon? Right, if we think about him with his knife and me with my chair, especially if I'm moving it here and I'm controlling my range, who's got the better weapon? Okay, so number three, find an equalizer. Fortify your position. Okay, so the next one then is try and make the best of what you can. So what we're looking at is trying to strengthen what we have, strengthen our defenses, and you know we can use clothing for that. So if you have a jacket and you have the ability to take that off, you can wrap that around your lead arm and you can use that to try and stifle any kind of stabbing going on there. You can use it to try and cut down on the, on the, on the slashes that you're going to receive, okay? So you can use clothing like that. Again, you can use other things as well, but it's just a suggestion. If you're able and you've got time, take some clothing off, wrap it around, use that as a barrier. Correct your stance and defend what's important. Be very aware of the fighting stance that you take, right? So what I mean is that if you're a sports fighter of any kind of uh, of any kind of discipline, then it's almost certain that what you're going to do is try and take a particular stance that is, you know, that's, that's trained into you, all right? But we've got to look at it and we've got to be realistic because it's different. So if you think about taking a boxing stance and we think about being here like this, now, what I've got to bear in mind is that a boxing stance is designed to protect the brain, They're trying to stop the computer from getting switched off, okay? What I need to look at is protecting the vital organs, protecting the main arteries, okay? Now, if we look at, you know, bleed out times, if we look at response times for ambulances and things like that, there's a big discrepancy, yeah? You know, if you look at cutting a main artery two to three minutes before you bleed to death, if you think about the average, um, 
estimated response time for an ambulance, which is not actually you know, guaranteed to get one, these are target times. I think for a moment, at the moment, it's, uh, it's eight minutes for a response of some kind and 12 minutes for uh, an ambulance. So you're looking at a good 10 minutes difference. Now, if I take a boxing stance, if we just come this way a moment. Now, if I take a boxing stance, all I want you to do is just slash onto the inside of my wrist. Okay, good, now you can just wander off and sit down for a couple of minutes and wait for me to bleed to death. Okay, lead leg forward. Now what I want you to do is just come onto the inside of the leg, same thing, all right, same deal. So when you're looking at dealing with a knife threat, an edge weapon threat, what we're looking to defend are main arteries, main organs, all right, so we want to be tucked in, we want to have hands in tight, arms in tight, shoulders up, protecting the neck, and I want to be in this kind of position here, okay. So make sure that you're going into the relevant stance for the threat in front of you. Control the knife arm and limit their movement. All right, so now we're at the point where all the other options have either failed or weren't feasible in the first instance, okay? So depending on you know the risk assessment that you do and everything else will determine what action you need to take. But make sure that it comes down in the right order. So we've got to think about all these other things before we get to now. All right, so when we're looking at a lot of martial arts defenses, a lot of um, you know, self-defense type schools that teach uh, you know, urban reality, gritty combat, whatever you want to call it, then what they'll do is they'll show all these kind of knife defenses and in the main, you know, if you've got nothing else left, then fair enough, but you need to make sure that you try and implement these other strategies first before we get here. All right, but we are here, okay? This is where we've got to. We've got no option now. So basically what I want to do, I'm not going to, I'm not going to break down how to achieve this today in this video. There are plenty of other videos that, are, that, are, that I've got where you can look at that, okay? So feel free to, you know, have a look at the channel. Feel free to um, see some of those videos. But what I need to do at this point is control that knife arm here, the blade. This is what I I need to control here. All right, I need to make sure that I cut down his range of movement. I don't want to let this go. Well, if you have no other choice, attack, and attack, finally, attack. Overwhelm. Yeah, if you've got no other choice, if every other option has become unavailable, then you have to commit to what you're doing 110%. It's not enough to go half assed. You've got to go for it, right? So if this happens and you really have no other choice, commit to what you're doing, go for it 100%. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to show you what it is to, you know, some options of things to do because that's outside of what we're talking about today. But whatever it is you've got, throw it at that person 110%. Okay, so guys, that's my hierarchy for edge weapons. Those are the steps that I recommend that people take. And hopefully you never find yourself in a situation where you'll need this information. Subscribe and click the bell icon.